Hey guys, welcome back to All About the Popcorn. My name is Stephanie. Thank you all for clicking on this video. If you're someone who enjoys talking about film, how about clicking that subscribe button? So for today's video, I'm going to be ranking 10 best picture winners. did just randomly pick 10 best picture winners that I have never seen before. I'm going to put them here. That way you can know what are the 10 movies that I did just watch for the very first time. That way you guys can kind of get a feel of how you may want to rank them. So in 10th place would be 1991's Dances with Wolves. Um, it did win seven awards, I believe it was, including director, which was um, Kevin Costner's directorial debut. He starred and directed in the movie. Out of the 10, this was definitely the easiest one to place. Um, it is a Western movie. And I'm not like particularly fond of Westerns, to be honest with you. Now, all the movies, I really didn't know much of anything about them going in. I don't even know why I ended up picking it. I think it's Kevin Costner was in it. I didn't even realize that he was a director um, until his name popped up. I went, oh! As the movie kind of progressed, it was just like, oh, no, I'm not really here for it. It's a little bit too long, longer than I feel it needs to be. Plus, you guys, plus, they kill, like, two dogs. Like, they just kill the damn dogs. Like, the white man kills the dogs. Little bastards. And they also, like, skin, um the buffalo because that you know during that time that was kind of like their meat and their fur and all that stuff that they needed the things for but i mean they were like i mean we didn't actually see them being skin but we saw the dead buffalo just there like skin it was terrible and then and then and then they shot the horse they shot the damn they should have shot the damn man they should have shot kevin costner and let the damn horse alive but no they shoot the horse like three times and i guess other than that it does have really beautiful like uh prairie shots um, i'm gonna try not to go like too deep into like an actual review because otherwise i should have just done the damn single reviews i'm um, just kind of like brief little things here and there i guess i'll give like mild spoilers seeing that these movies have been out for years and years and years but just in case there are a lot of you out there like me who have not yet seen these movies coming in in ninth place would be 2001's winner gladiator russell crowe was nominated here as well for his performance well not nominated well he was nominated but he won for his performance here in gladiator now um i think that I'm just 20 years too late for this particular movie. I'm not 100% here for it, to be honest with you. I didn't even know freaking Joaquin Phoenix was in the movie, to be honest with you. His little baby cheeks out. He's so, uh, even when it came out 20 years ago, it never even really called my attention, honestly. Yeah, we're just gonna... Now we're going to go ahead and move on to number 8 and that's going to be 1989's winner Rain Man. Dustin Hoffman also won an Oscar that night. So when Charlie's dad passes away he ends up going to the world reading to find out that his dad only left him a Buick. Um, now Charlie is played by Tom Cruise when he tries to track down who actually inherited the $3 million that was supposed to go to him because he was the only living um, heir as far as he was aware. He soon finds out after some investigating that he actually has an older brother who is played by Dustin Hoffman. Now Dustin Hoffman plays Raymond and he is somebody who has autism. Now they do in the kind of traveling cross country uh, just because Raymond does not want to get on an airplane. Really it's about like patience because of course uh, Charlie ha didn't know that he had a brother, didn't know, just didn't know how to deal with somebody who is autistic. And in seventh place would be 1978's winner Annie Hall which was directed by Woody Allen. Now we're going to kind of just go past and look past the Woody Allens and the Harvey Weinsteins here because I, you know, if you saw at the beginning, I did have Chicago and I don't even know if there's other ones on my list um, that he does produce. Even like the abuse or the, you know, the misconduct that was involved with like Kramer versus Kramer. We're going to look past all that, you guys. We're not, we're just looking at the picture. We're not looking at what happened behind the scenes and not things or people that were involved and stuff with it. I don't need y'all coming at me um, with that. Now to start off with, people already dislike it because of Woody Allen, but like again, we're just going to move past it. The other reason people really 
are not particularly fond of this movie was because it did beat out Star Wars. One thing about Annie Hall in this like romantic towel is that it's not like a fluff piece. This is really, we're getting like down dirty into what a real relationship really is. Uh, we do have Woody Allen who plays um, our Alvi, sorry, I had to think about his name. He does come out in the movie as well, along with Diane Keaton. Um, they do absolutely great together. I love them. But the last thing I want to say about the movie is that Woody Allen is the narrator uh, within the story as well. So we do get that fourth wall break, which I think that is done very, very well. But I know some people are not particularly fond of that fourth wall break. Number six is going to be 1973's winner. Some of you probably already know, you're like, don't say it, don't say it. It's the Godfather. It's the Godfather. I know there are people who put this as being the best movie, a masterpiece, the best of the best, absolutely greatest gangster movie there is. It's brilliant. It's this, 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 and that. Yes, the story is great. It is brilliant. It's fucking long. And I wasn't fully, like, there for it. Honestly, again, didn't know anything about it other than I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse and you come here and my daughter's wedding <laughs> And then like when the part about the horse head was happening. I was like, I just knew it because I remembered it from the Simpsons I did not realize that Al Pacino was in this movie. I knew he was a godfather in part two, which I was going to watch I was but I wasn't 100% on number one and I'm just like but I totally agree. The storytelling, the acting, the score, everything was absolutely amazing. It was fantastic. It's a beautiful movie. I just was not 100 on it. I, I had it up high, you guys, on my list. I honestly thought about putting it down lower, but I was just like, I'm not going to do it. I think I got too scared. I got too scared putting it down. <laughs> I, got, I got scared of you guys. You're gonna leave me. I know it. So in fifth place, we're halfway through it, you guys. It's gonna be 2002's winner, A Beautiful Mind, uh, which does star Russell Crowe. Um, he was nominated for this one. Jennifer Colony was also in the movie. Um, she was nominated. I believe she won for the movie. Yes, Jennifer Colony won. We are following John Nash, who is played by uh, Russell Crowe. This is actually based on a true story. He was a mathematician, like protege genius from like Princeton uh, who unfortunately did get um, a schizophrenia. He does end up conquering it and he actually ends up winning the Nobel Prize in 1994. Let me look at my notes. Yeah, 94. Once you find out what's really going on and then like the people who are not actually real. Like, I was confused. Like, I went, wait, wait, what? And it's all like with the mind and what they're seeing and what's there, what's not there. Um, but I, at one point I went, no, they're like lying to you, they're lying. But then it was like, no, they're not real. This is one that I really don't want to give you guys any spoilers. Cause you really, if you haven't seen it, uh, cause you really need to go in there and like experience that. Like, oh my god, it's all in his mind kind of deal. But I think it's a really, really beautiful movie. I truly, truly did enjoy it um, a lot. Moving on to number four, that's going to be 1980s winner, Kramer vs. Kramer. Now, Dustin Hoffman won his first Academy Award with this one because Rain Man came uh, a couple years afterward. Meryl Streep also went. I believe The Little Kid was also nominated. Now, a year, two years ago, whenever Marriage Story uh, did come out, I remember that that movie was being compared to this one a lot. Um, I had not, obviously, had not seen the movie at that time, but I did mention that in my review. I was like, just in case. Um, but now that I have seen it, honestly, I wouldn't have compared it to it. I guess the one bad thing about the movie is the way that they make uh, Meryl's character is that kind of like the villain right they never really gave us as the audience an opportunity to kind of like her or you know feel sorry for her for whatever reason it is that you know she ended up leaving we never got her perspective um now this is about a father who is ultimately raising the son um as a single parent after the mom did leave something as simple as making french toes at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie just the the way that that just made you feel it's very it gets pretty emotional i don't think i cried did i cry I may have got like a little bit of tear coming out. Yes, I did. I did. There at the end, I got like a little bit of tears. Now, before I do give you my top three, if you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a like. 
subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new now coming in in third place is a really really fun movie that's gonna be 2003's chicago i cannot believe i had not seen this movie this is where it all that jails um Catherine jones also won an oscar for uh, her performance here uh renee zellweger was nominated and john c riley we got a bunch of other people queen latifah also it's a great great cast so much fun costumes were amazing i believe it also won for costume design love 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 the songs the musical numbers my favorite one is definitely like that tingle block deal like after i saw it i'm like trying to get my tingle on i don't know if anybody else is like that when you see like movies with like sports or like dancing you now think you can do it and you're like Ooh, that definitely is one of my favorite he had it coming mm -mm. richard gear is like the big hot shot lawyer who just pretty much gets anybody out of like death row uh roxy who is played by renee zellweger has always wanted to like be a singer, be a performer, and obviously never really got to it. She ended up in jail after she like murdered her lover because he lied to her. Ultimately, Chicago is a tale of murder and fame. And it's just done like in a funny, dark, charming, musical type of way. It was really, really entertaining. I think it's made it into one of my favorite musicals. Honestly, I, I truly, truly enjoyed it. All right, number two would be 1944's winner, Casablanca. Of course, it's very beloved, a classic. Here's looking at you, kid. One of the most quotable movies, I feel like. It is shot beautifully. It is in black and white. I think this is the only one on my list that's in black and white. Let me double check it again. I think it is. Yeah, it's the only one on my list that's in black and white. But it does take place uh, during World War II. We are in Casablanca, Morocco. I think that's where it's at. While I was watching it, I kept thinking <laughs> Ricky Ricardo's Tropicana Cafe. But kind of like in the same thing. We're pretty much... We are, right? Yeah, the majority of the movie is within that cafe. It was funnier than I thought. I mean, it wasn't like me slapping funny, but it, it does have like a witty little charm to it. I feel like this one actually still holds up to the day and it has really, really good dialogue. It's witty, it's sharp, it's memorable. And I absolutely love it. I totally agree. This is one that I agree that it's like one of those masterpieces, one of greatest movies ever made. I absolutely loved Casablanca. Uh, I was really afraid that I wasn't going to. That's why it took me so long to watch it. I am so glad I finally watched it. It is a great, great, great movie, you guys. But, but, I almost had it as my number one. I did, but then I saw 1976 winners. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Now this does star Jack Nicholson, a very, 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 very handsome Jack Nicholson. Uh, we also have little parts for Christopher Lloyd. We have Danny DeVito in the movie as well. This is where the iconic villain Nurse Ratchet um, takes place. I honestly thought Nurse Ratchet was supposed to be like a darker person. I mean, since she's like supposed to be this like great villain. I didn't think she was that bad. I mean, now that I think about it, actually, I guess it was more like a psychological, like, messing around that she was doing more than physically. I do love how McMurphy, who is played by uh, Jack Nicholson, he really wasn't, like, mean or biased or, like, trying to exclude anybody. Like, he was literally, like, over there trying to befriend everybody. That ending, though, I was not expecting that ending at all. I was just, like... I do think it's like excellent uh, writing and the performances and it's just such a great psychological drama with a little bit of humor in it. Absolutely loved it. Again, I knew absolutely nothing about this movie going in. But yeah, you guys, these are the 10 uh, Best Picture winners that I've never seen before, but now I have just ranked. Go ahead and let me know down below how you rank these top 10 movies that I just saw for the first time. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.